Hello, everybody. Welcome to the new year. It's 2021, and today is January 20... No, not 21st, 12th, and we're doing government security. <laughs> so close. I'm just glad we haven't had any, you know, major events in 2021 yet. <sighs> Same. I'm so, just so glad everything's so stable and calm. Yeah. and. It's really good. It's really a nice change of pace. And speaking of a change of pace, maybe this is a good one. I have my doubts because uh, it's not this gentleman's first go around, but a lot of people are hyped for this. Open source developer named David Recordon. Oh my God, your name right. I'm sorry. Named the White House Director of Technology. This is the, this guy is behind a lot of things. OpenID and OAuth, and this is not his first government rodeo. And he's also worked on the campaign and a lot of other stuff in government. So he's got a lot of experience in government, but also outside government. And it appears that he has the real deal technical chops. And I have a lot of hope for him because um, he was part of the Obama administ administration. And we know how open and welcome they are for <laughs> open source software. So we can really count on this guy to change it, things. It's funny. You know, uh, there's a 18F, like the 18F group. They were doing a lot of stuff with open source to the extent that like Google and, uh, or no, I'm sorry. It was Oracle and Accenture sued them for being too successful with that because they were reducing waste and government spending. Anyway, he's going to have his work cut out for him. He is indeed. <clears throat> I'm sure he'll be a Twitter darling. <laughs> we got more information about solar winds. None of it is too groundbreaking, but it does, I think, set the pace of, just a trickle of sewage for the rest of the year. Yes. As we learn more and more about how bad this was. SolarWinds hackers access DOJ emails. Well, but there's no indication they reached classified systems. <laughs> but still, you know, when this was first reported and we covered it in the news, Microsoft said, oh, this is probably only like 40 really high profile customers that, that have been affected. And we said, no, this is just the tip of the iceberg. And sure enough, this is just the tip of the iceberg. And just because there was no indication doesn't mean in six months we'll find out yeah. that they did something. By then, we'll probably be okay with it because things will have gotten so much worse. <laughs> but uh, the trickle is not just more escalation and how bad it was, but the number of people involved and the number of companies that keep getting dragged into this horrible, horrible thing increases. FBI probe of major hack includes project management software from JetBrains. So JetBrains is not an American company. I think they're in Romania, but they like whatever magic is going on in Romania, they've really figured it out. The JetBrains people really know how to make good software for developers. I think and, Romania is probably vampire magic, right? Uh, well, no. vampire magic in software. Undead. <laughs> Undead magic and software. I mean, that makes sense because after you've worked long enough on a software project, you feel like you're undead. <laughs> Confirm. <laughs> Probably difficult though, because like with everlasting life, you transition slower in new things, and the, the speed at which software moves got to yeah. be difficult, right? That article points out that like 79 of the top Fortune 100 use JetBrains products. So <laughs> much like Silver Wind. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, we still don't know who was responsible. We have some ideas. We have some conflicting sources, <laughs> but that doesn't stop them from running this headline because they have that catch word in there. The Associated Press uh, is saying that the U.S. agencies, federal agencies, are saying these hacks, oh, they're likely of Russian in origin. I think they might have printed this headline because Trump said it was China. Yes. And they love to contradict him. Yeah. So... Although I would say that he has exactly as much, uh, you know, like proof as they do. <laughs> yeah. Zero. And uh, if you are a big user of WeChat and you also like to visit America, this could get annoying for you. U.S. bans WeChat Pay, Alipay, and six more Chinese payment apps. One of them was like the Office software. I had no idea that you could do payments inside of their Office software. But all of this is, is banned. This is part of a larger China news block because we were waffling on a lot of this stuff for the last couple of weeks. Uh, Alipay specifically had asked for clarification. It's like, hey, are we going to be banned still? And they, you know, he's like, there's an incoming administration. You may not be banned. And then all of a sudden this week it's like, banned. There's also a question of like, I think 
the Biden's team has announced anything that's not there by the 20th, they're stopping. Oh, yeah. Like, they're just going to, like, if it's not done by then, I don't know how long these take to go into effect. This this next story is is another example of, like, it was canceled, and then it was not, it was uncanceled, and they were notified, and then now it's back on. Yeah, this was the Treasury Secretary, which, you know, could have been given marching orders. But, again, it's just this whole thing about, we went, we attacked China so hard, but now at the end of things, when... You know, it's there's a lot of loose ends. <laughs> now th- there's going to be an orderly transition this, of power. Uh, this, the Chinese Trump saga, I think we're in season eight. Yeah. And all the threads are dropping. Yeah. And they're never going to get picked back up. Season the eight, York- like Game of Thrones season eight. Exactly. Yeah, it's like, oh, his grandfather's, you know, dragon glass sword. That was irrelevant. It didn't matter. Uh, New York Stock Exchange to delist three Chinese telecoms in Disney, dizzying about face. So they were going to be delisted, then they got a stay of execution, and now it's back on. I don't think it ever told us which ones they were. Uh, no, it's mentioned in the article. Yeah, it's... Oh, here we go. China Mobile, China Telecom, and China Unicom. Hong Kong. So China Unicom. Unicom hum, Hong Kong. So... Yeah, things are getting real dicey in Hong Kong. That's a whole other set of stories. Well, this is another one. Is there time for this to actually go into law before it just gets swept off the desk? Who knows? One man who is probably following that closely, assuming he's allowed to access media at this point. Assuming he's still alive. Is Jack Ma. Uh, this was written on the 4th. I've not seen any updates in terms of has anybody seen him yet? No, uh, and actually a couple other billionaires that had uh, a lower profile even than him are also unreachable. Ooh, doesn't look good. Yeah. Jack Ma, is disappearing act, fuels speculation about billionaires' whereabouts. So Jack Ma and a few other Chinese billionaires have spoken out against some things that but the... But not... Like, it wasn't that bad if you read it. Well, his speech was in Hong Kong, and he was kind of like... There was subtext of, like, supporting Hong Kong, and that was not allowed. But yeah, uh, they did, like, they ran through the quotes in that article where he kind of walked it back afterwards, and he was much softer, but I think the damage was done. Yeah. <laughs> I he really don't tolerate that. He was also, like, he had his own reality show that was like Shark Tank or something, and he's just completely disappeared. Like <laughs> I the, think... They're uh, not talking about why he's not there. I think the his problem is that not only did he become rich enough to challenge them, but his popularity got to the point. Oh yeah, they had to worry. Yeah, because if that if he became like the you know the face of the Hong Kong Revolution, imagine what that would do. Yeah, nothing bad for the Hong Kong people. Chris, are you still playing Overwatch? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> every well, time since 2016. Every time you capture a point. Another bamboo shoot goes under Jack Ma's fingernails. I hope you're okay oh. with that. Oh. That's something I forget about. Like, that's a torture thing that some people do. And <laughs> I don't think they do it anymore. It always, like, makes my nails hurt. To think well, I, think, about. I think throughout our lifetime, you know, at some point we've accidentally jammed something underneath our fingernails. So we have a memory of kind of sort of what that feels like when it's unintentional. Crouton got a claw under my thumbnail one time. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. I was like, this is definitely going to get infected. But I... I got some alcohol in there, which was also horrible, and <laughs> it was okay. Uh, so the big thing about Jack Ma is not just his own personal accomplishments, but uh, Alibaba is kind of taking over China. And I think the biggest point of contention here is that the Chinese government wants digital payments, but Jack Ma already has digital payments kind of locked down. His, he's got a huge percentage of the country using his thing. And... I don't think they like that either. China is said to censor local media coverage of its Alibaba probe. So this has been ongoing since October, and there's some documentation and some guidelines. So it's like, hey, local media, if you're going to cover this, here's what we want you to cover. This other stuff, you're not going to cover that. And I don't think they're allowed to cover much. So it turns out the Chinese people like the Amazon formula as well. It's like we in America, we're super addicted to that Amazon Prime shipping. You know how amazing it is when you're sitting on the crapper and it's just like, I'm going to hit a button and reorder that thing that I forgot about. Well, it's also, I mean, this is the year for Amazon. Like, I almost never order from Amazon, but this year I have because I don't want to go to the (laughs) store to get anything. I'm sure that's also true of the Chinese merchants. Yeah. yeah. 
we've ordered so much from Amazon that the and the UPS deliveries are so weird that UPS has taken to just taping our boxes together so they can move them as a unit. Oh, because it's different names. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, the other big tech thing that happened internationally this year, one of them was the ARM acquisition, and we heard a lot of kind of grumbling. And they're like, hey, that's our only tech company, and you're going to take it, and you're a different country, and we don't like that. But the deal went through, at least for now. But it seems like there's going to be a long, long path for actually getting approval. UK watchdog begins investigating NVIDIA's 40 billion takeover of ARM. Competition and Markets Authority is examining the deal to buy the UK-based chip firm. I think ultimately this will go through. This is going to be a bunch of red tape. NVIDIA is going to promise to leave arm alone in the uk but uh the really interesting things happen i think in year two you got to give them long enough to forget yeah or the whole you know brexit thing just gets so weird and something happens with that you hope that you know that's like oh something will happen there and then we can just go ahead and take this move it to america like we always (laughs) planned (laughs) and speaking of brexit uh this was not unexpected i guess but now that it's here i don't think very many people know what to do about it and i don't know if there's a lot they can do about it because of the way these rules are set up Eighty-one thousand uk owned dot eu domains suspended as brexit transition ends the uk lost its right to the dot eu website uh when the it left the european union block leaving many domain owners in limbo so if you want your domain back, you have to update your registration to a valid EU address. You can't own a .eu unless you're in the EU. What country, was it Delaware where you register all your businesses to get the, the, the tax, tax breaks? breaks. Tax breaks yeah. yeah. What EU country is going to become the Delaware for <laughs> domains? Luxembourg. Is that even an EU country? I don't think they have low taxes. <laughs> I was going to say Greece, but. That's probably right. Yeah. Because you know, Greece is like, yeah, hell yeah, we'll register those domains for you. But they've already we'll gotten in money. a, they got in a little bit of trouble for being too free with their, you know, like, yeah, we're in the union, but we're so poor, we'll let you do anything. Yeah. And this, uh, a bit of good news, although this was later tempered. I didn't include the other story, but there was a follow up. So good news, but then some bad news as well about Mr. Assange. Uh, the BBC. I guess BBC.com reports Julian Assange, the UK has blocked the extradition of the WikiLeaks founder to the US. This is a win for victory and journalism everywhere, right? No. (laughs) The judge looked at it and said, your prison system is really messed up. He will probably commit suicide. So we are blocking his extradition. But the judge was definitely on the side of the prosecution. Like, super on the side of the prosecution. She didn't see any merit in anything that Assange has ever done, which is disappointing. And he was denied bail. If he could have gotten bail, he probably could have gone home and just, you know, stayed there for the rest of his life. But no, he will stay there a little while longer. I'm surprised that the judge didn't have anything to say about the whole fact that it's like spying in an embassy, which is supposed to be neutral ground, and the whole like Swedish angle. And like when that was, you know, examined, like it's like, hey, we've got a bunch of questions about what's going on in Sweden. It just disappeared. You know, it seems like he was right all along, which seems like that should count for something. Are you really surprised about that? No, but it's just disappointing. Back before China became the boogeyman, you might remember our previous boogeyman, <laughs> which was Iran. And uh, we had WMDs. <laughs> oh, what else? The times. Well, not just the WMDs, because they were hi- hacking us as well. They were the sort of the cyber enemy for a short time there. And uh, we put a lot of the same sanctions that we're putting on China against them And it has taken this long for some companies to work their way around that. GitHub secures a license from the U.S. government to offer GitHub to developers in Iran. What they did not secure a license for was for the logo to be that happy about it. What do you think about this little... Is that a squid or an octopus? It's got five arms. I think it's... Yeah, I think it's supposed to be... Because it has suckers on the arms. But a squid... little circles? Doesn't a squid have six? Maybe. Where's the six tentacle, Krista? Also, why does he have a face on the front of him? I think it, aren't like their mouths like underneath all the suckers. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, uh, it looks it looks to me like the graphic designer initially drew it with four appendages, and, and it was like well, and then they got it back, and it was like no, he's a, the, it's 
four what and they're like all right i'll add one more i'm he gonna say looks like pat like right now <laughs> i'm gonna say that he was uh a thief <laughs> and this is a product of sharia law <laughs> Well, I can definitely tell you that that license to offer this software to Iran does not permit him to be that happy about it. <laughs> He's thrilled. That's why they you were like, you know what? Anatomically, his mouth should be below, but we want everyone to know how happy he is. Can you imagine how... Christy, you should do a version of that that's correct, like mouth location and eye location and stuff like that. <laughs> and also the federally approved amount of happiness. <laughs> so, uh... We know that China is basically, they're already digital pay. I mean, they didn't mandate it, but the people have kind of just accepted it. And a lot of countries are trying to do the same thing. We've seen that our central bank has sort of floated this idea of a federal uh, federal digital coin. There's like a, an acronym that they use for it now. So it's like, oh no, this is a thing, a government regulated <laughs> crypto. And uh, some of these smaller countries, when they try to get into this, they're not gonna do their own, they're gonna partner up with existing companies. The Ukraine government picks Stellar Development Foundation to help build a national digital currency. I think that, uh, I mean, this, it sparks off a whole other set of conversations, but in all of these implementations of cryptocurrencies, anonymity is completely out the window. You at least still have anonymity with cash. And, you know, a financial crime is kind of a thing to worry about. But there's got to be a happy medium. But when, I mean, you know, we, we can look at the Chinese government and it's like, okay, they're just literally abducting people and putting them into <laughs> slave camps. They, they've abducted, abducted, well, allegedly they've abducted a billionaire. But then back here on several our, billionaires, back here on our own soil, not on our soil, but because of our soil, Assange and Snowden. Yeah. So you can't ever trust this. Yeah. I mean, if you make them mad, and they control, this is the whole mark of the beast argument. Yeah. And take the religious thing out of it. It's, they've got a point. If the <laughs> government can just shut you off, that's a problem. If you've got a transactional trail that follows you from the time you're born to the time you're dead, it's like, let's see your personal blockchain. Oh, here's that time you bought some chewing gum at a 7-Eleven in 1983. And that's why we're convicting you of this murder. Yeah. <laughs> you like grape flavor? You must be a psychopath. <laughs> Also, look at the Bitcoin price on here. Damn. What is it? Uh, it's like 40, 40. Wow. What was that? 43. It made it to 43. <laughs> wow. I, haven't, I haven't been following the news. I've been a little unproductive lately. We've got, uh, we've got stories about that in the business section for sure. <laughs> now, over in Japan, uh, you know, the U.S. and the Western world, we have some pretty strict copyright law, but Japan's right there with us. Uh, you know, China, they don't really care that much. But Japan's trying to get like on the copyright restriction bandwagon. But up until now, they've had what some might call the weeb loophole. <laughs> but in 2021, it will slam closed. Japan's new anti-piracy law goes live. Here's how it's going to work. If you download anything, they can prosecute you. This article is like, oh, the friendly corporations will not pursue casual downloaders. Don't worry. Mark my words. They're going to pursue casual downloaders. Now, you might be thinking, well, Japan is already doing that. And that's true for the more common forms of media that we have. I think they sort of patterned their law on ours. So they had like, you know, film and TV and stuff like that. Well, they go after BitTorrent only because there's the upload component. What they left out was manga, magazines, and literary works. Those were not part of their law. But they are now. It's only a matter of time before downloading stuff is also criminalized here. No, that's part of it. Not here, I mean. Oh, yeah. In the U oh, absolutely. Oh, they're, they're going to march this out. Yeah. And be, be like, like, look, Japan. It's working wonderfully. Yeah. This is a tragedy for yeah, Japan. It's very interesting. They're, they're going to extend this to like car repair. They're like, you shouldn't have these tools to repair your car because they're copyright. <laughs> car repair, uh, like Nissan, is going to start making their service manuals mangas. <laughs> How brilliant would that, that probably be? already exists. I'm just describing <laughs> Ikea. Ikea already does that. <laughs> And speaking of Japanese car manufacturers, one of them made a terrible mistake. Now, they say they're looking into this, but you got to think at this point, they've probably found the culprit, right? Yeah. He's going to have a tough time in the Japanese job market. 
Nissan source code leaked online after Git repo misconfiguration. Nissan was allegedly running a Bitbucket Git server with the default credentials of admin admin. Whoops. Ouch. I wonder if they lost anything of value. Well, here's what they got. <laughs> Nissan NA mobile apps. All right, good. We can reverse engineer those and have something that's reasonably functional. Some parts of the Nissan Assist Diagnostics tool. Oh, perfect. Right to repair. Here we come. The dealer business system, dealer porter. Yes. I can also rip that off. That'll be great. Nissan internal core mobile library. He Okay, whatever. Sounds good. There's a lot of stuff here that seems like it would be good for right to repair people and people looking to reverse engineer things. Yeah, probably uh, some security risks out of that, but probably even more embarrassing trade secrets. Yeah. <laughs> or just embarrassing coding standards. It's like, you really mean to tell me the ABS <laughs> brake system has all this commented code in here that's like, I don't know why this works, but here we go. Or there's just no comments at all. <laughs> so I'm sure we'll see more of that. I'm sure that we'll also see that it's like, anybody in possession of this source code is a felon. Yeah, certainly in Japan, that's that's the case. That's that's the law that has already passed. Society is doomed. So we have all been following closely along with this uh, Apple privacy policy thing. The uh, nutrition labels, as they call them, have gone into effect. <laughs> if you've launched an app on your iPhone, you've probably seen what is being stolen from you as you use that. And you get a yes or no, which is great. And now we're starting to see all of these policies and what exactly they're asking for. And I think uh, Facebook was like, oh, we might as well tear off the Band-Aid, right? Let's just go ahead and do this. <laughs> WhatsApp is updating its terms and privacy policy. WhatsApp service and how you process your data, blah, blah, blah. You're going to get a pop-up basically that says, hey, this is what we're sharing with Facebook. And it's a lot of stuff. Yeah, they have... Uh they list them here, but it's it's like everything. Uh, if you want to just sample a few of these that uh, they tell you, this is how it's going to benefit you. I don't know. <laughs> we will make suggestions for you. Uh, do we? When, when we make suggestions for you, do we also include the, the fact that if you're in an extremist group on Facebook, which is a group labeled as extremist by Facebook's own algorithm, 64% of the members of those groups were became members because Facebook suggested that they join those groups. We we see you're interested in anti-vaccination. Would you also like to storm the Capitol building? <laughs> yeah, that's 64% yeah. of the time. That is uh, uh -huh. according to Facebook's own internal report. That is that is how that uh -huh. happened. Now, if you think back to the Facebook acquisition of WhatsApp, I don't know if they explicitly said this, but they certainly led us to believe that this kind of thing was just never going to happen. <laughs> and we were stupid for even questioning it. <laughs> and here we are. Yeah. Telegram, on the other hand, has uh, been exposed to have a terrible security flaw. <laughs> but when questioned about it, they were like, no, nah, we built it that way. <laughs> it's not a bug. It's a feature. Uh, Telegram feature exposes your precise address to hackers. So... How is the, like, what is this? And it's like, Telegram lets you see people that are nearby. The problem is that if you're running the, the Telegram software, you're not necessarily where you say you are because Telegram relies on getting sensor data. Guess what you can do? You can build a sandbox Android application for application testing. You can simulate GPS. You can simulate being in range of certain SSIDs so they can figure out where you are. Triangulate. Remember all those movies you watched where it was like, <laughs> triangulate, and you're like, they can't do that. Well, they can. Yeah. And, uh, and not, it's easy I, to do. When I say they, I mean anybody with a Telegram account. <laughs> you don't even have to have a real device. You can just be like, let's see all the Telegram users in Moscow. I'm currently in Moscow too. And it's like, okay, sounds good. But that is off by default and you have to turn it on. So if you are a Telegram user, don't turn that on. <laughs> it's a security risk. And uh, so that we've moved on to security with that story, if you did not notice. And as usual, we get one of these at least every couple of weeks. It is a new way for someone to try to siphon off your delicious cryptocurrencies. Hackers target cryptocurrency users with new electro rat malware. So they're targeting users based on previous leaks. See also the ledger leak. And it's like, oh, I'm a target now for this really advanced malware because, you know, I have cryptocurrency. Uh... Krista, what is this object in the in the... The picture here. It's like a I misshapen... I think that is supposed to be a virus. A tumor, perhaps? It looks more yeah, like a bacteria like, than a virus. That's supposed to be like that outer shell. Hmm. 
you know what I mean? The protein or whatever mm, breaks gotcha. down in, in with soap. I don't know. It's a bit lazy, uh, but not, I think that's what it's supposed it. to be. But yeah, this is, uh, because it's written in Go, it is, for now, harder to detect because the malware detection is used to looking at other kinds of languages. So if you're into writing malware, maybe learn Go. I think is the lesson there. <laughs> and uh, in Italy, they had a major data breach. And uh, what a what a strange name for a telecom yeah. company. I guess it's, you know, like the language barrier. That doesn't mean that there. But still, you'd think somebody yeah. that, on the marketing that's team. That's all would. I could think looking at this story. I was like, what a horrible name. Uh, Italian mobile operator suffers... Uh, offers to replace SIM cards after massive data breach. Turns out their entire customer base was being sold on the dark web, which, and it, there was enough information in the database to do SIM jacking and SIM cloning. So the Italian mobile operator has said, hey, if you just bring your phone in and one piece of identification, we will swap your SIM for you. Which seems like it would be a message to criminals. Because like, if you've already got that information, you could just... Hmm? Well, they uh, they mentioned that before this, you could initiate that SIM replacement through the mail. <laughs> so they've canceled that program. <laughs> you think that the criminals were taking advantage of that and then they were researching it and they were like, oh man, the entire database is on the dark web. <laughs> Whoops. I think it was actually a security researcher that showed it to them. It's never <laughs> these companies that find it. Do yeah. what now? We're where? Oh. And, uh, if you have a wireless router in your home, I imagine most of the people watching do, then you have this new thing to worry about. Malware uses the Wi-Fi BSS ID for victim identification. So for wireless tracking, your physical device MAC address is randomized, but not the access point that you're connecting to. This is twofold a problem. One, if the malware people have infected so many devices, it would be convenient to know which devices are on the same network? Well, this is one way to do that. The other thing is that uh, there are a lot of commercial companies that have little cars, you know, little cars that drive around and map everything. There are also cars that drive around and collect SSIDs, you know, Wi-Fi access points that are broadcasting. And the car remembers exactly where it saw all of them. So if somebody is connected to a wireless network, even if they don't have GPS on, attackers can use that to figure out physically where they are. And they, much like the software companies, they will adjust their prices accordingly. Yeah. Or they will just ignore certain countries altogether. Yeah. Especially the ones they're working out of for obvious reasons. So, uh, yeah, that's unfortunate. Neat. And uh, the, this one of these, just no excuse. Um, <laughs> if you are... Fool uh, me once, shame on me. Fool me seven times. If you're former Attorney General Barr... And you're reading this, you're probably just <laughs> thinking about other things because clearly you don't comprehend this or else your entire push for encryption breaking would be dismissed with this one headline. <laughs> Backdoor account discovered in more than 100,000 Zexel firewalls and VPN gateways. This is not the first time this company has been affected by this controversy. This is now the second or third time and it's not going to be easy to patch all of these devices quickly. Now, they, uh, they had a pretty decent username and password pair here. The problem was it was in plain text in the source. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Attorney General Barr will interpret that as, we just got to hide it better. We've got to add more extended characters. <laughs> so that's embarrassing. If you have one of those, you might want to stop using it. Yeah. Or unplug it immediately. Yeah. Now, we all know that uh, with the rise of Tesla, uh, we've entered into a world where our cars are going to spy on us. <laughs> they are, we're gonna have things in our home that spy on us, our cars are gonna spy on us, our children are probably gonna spy on us, our neighbors for sure with their ring doorbells. <laughs> but up until now, you might have thought that you could trust your thresher. <laughs> no, they got my thresher. The no. deep state has got my thresher. In fact, the thresher might be spying more than anything else. Access to big data to, uh, turns farm machine makers into tech firms. So this is this was the coalition of farm implement makers, and they said, okay, we're going to put all this this data gathering stuff in our farm equipment, but we're going to let farmers own the data. And John Deere said, not so fast. 
And Forbes really paints this in a positive light. And they don't mention anything about that John Deere repair stuff. <laughs> yeah. John Deere does not want the farmers to actually own the data that they collect. So you're, you kind of have to make a deal with the devil. Like if you're a farmer and you're running this fancy new equipment, you can collect the thing. If you have some sort of entrepreneurial idea for things that you could do with big, big farm data, there's literally nothing you're going to be able to do about it because a state a claim has already been staked by these farm implement companies. It's really it's really anti-competitive. And uh, they it's actually innovation. They have a quote from one of the guys, like one of the people who actually deals with the customers, and he was like, "You know, they're good old boys. These are these are farmers." And he was like, if they had any idea, <laughs> they would be so furious. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, so it turns out, and you might be thinking it's like, oh, it's, you know, oil life and number of hours on the engine and blah, blah, blah. No, it's the spaces between the seats. Yeah. It is an insane, insane amount of data. Yeah. And Christy, you can make your crop more efficient. Christy, you wish you had this kind of data tracking for your upcoming uh, yard garden. No. Oh. This uh, this te- this kind of thing terrifies me because I I watched a documentary about the Great Depression earlier this year, and what triggered that, or not the Great Depression, but like the the Dust Bowl, which was part of the Great Depression, and it's like, what if the, you know they continually just you know, based on the stats that they see, but the farmers don't, they're just they keep pushing for more and more profit and more and more monocultures, and then we end up with the second Dust Bowl. What I'm if that right. happens? We're already in a place where they don't allow reuse of the seeds. <laughs> yeah, I know. How much worse like, can this it get? Feels like this could get worse. Like, <laughs> not only do they not allow reuse of the seeds, if you happen to live next to somebody who's licensed the seeds and you don't, and nature takes its course, and you know that corn breeds with your corn, Cross you're screwed. Farming. Yeah, you're screwed yeah. financially. They'll sue you. But we, I think we we got to put our faith in the vertical farms at this point, right? Uh, I mean, the vertical farms don't seem to be an in innov- like. It seems to me that the farm implement companies are like the old horse and buggy companies, and the vertical farm people are have nothing to do with like John Deere. Like John Deere is oh. so like, I want to hang on to whatever market share I already have. They can't see the forest for the trees, which, that's, which is maybe good. It's all like earth moving stuff. Yeah, and you take that out of the equation. Yeah. Oh. The real hope you put in is growing your own food. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know if grow LEDs use rare resources. Oh yeah, but they use increasingly small amounts of it. You don't need a lot of material to turn electricity into photons. But you really, you need really good stuff for that level of yeah precision. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, we have a couple grow lights and they're just garbage we got off Amazon and they're like middling at best. And we don't grow food. We just grow like trees during the summer or during the winter. I mean, if you think about all that stuff in broad strokes, though, everything is a race to Amazon is not like this melting pot of like really competitive things. It is a uh, what is the least like we will sell you a product that is just not crappy enough that you won't bother to return it. So you got a grow light and it's like terrible, but it's just good enough that you won't return it. That is what Amazon is optimizing for. Not good products. I mean, Chris, can't confirm. We didn't return it. We still have it. Chris, I'm going to go ahead and apologize to you. <laughs> <laughs> Why? We accidentally forgot to include your video. <laughs> but that's okay. Your your webcam is especially awful today, but that problem will soon be <laughs> rectified. Yeah, sorry. You, it's uh, dark outside. It's snowing. Yeah, we had you turned off from the last time. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, for the, I mean, you've already commented. What, what can I say? Did you put on the uh, the eye makeup this this week? Chris? I, I can't put a tell. Bit on, yeah. <laughs> such a small small thumbnail. I can't. Quite we tell. we we have some we have some new since this whole like from home thing. Like we probably should have done this at the beginning of the year, but we got some new gear on the way. We'll look good we when we're doing remote things. Some right. some better lighting. Because right now mine. I'm just rocking like the the boob light that you have in apartments. That's what I have on right now. <laughs> So, uh, in our final story, I, I want I want us all to think back. <laughs> That's another level one. I told you so. To, to March, <laughs> was it March or April when all this rolled out? Uh, I think we were talking about this in February, but yeah. Well, it took time no, for no. for the tracking. To yeah, yeah, yeah. So, when the uh, contact tracing rolled around, of course, a lot of people. I mean, it wasn't just us. Said, 
gosh, you know, this is a lot of information to be giving you, and we know you're going to keep it forever, and we're worried about how you will abuse it. And they fell all over themselves to be like, you're stupid. We would never <laughs> abuse this. We would never let it be used for anything but stopping this deadly virus, and you need to participate. And I got to give credit to at least in the U.S., people were like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. I kind of feel better not doing not that. Not only am I not going to tell you who my contacts are, I'm going to give you a hard time about convincing me to wear a mask. Yeah, and so, uh, well, we don't want to conflate <laughs> the two. But uh, as we see from Singapore, that might have been the right move. Singapore police can access the contact tracing data for criminal investigations. It's like, oh, I see from this trace that you were at the 7-Eleven on the corner at the night in question. Yeah. Good job, Singapore. Now, here's the difference. Singapore has a 78% participation rate. Mm. So that is a lot of the country. Yeah. <laughs> Their entire movement for, you know, eight, seven, eight months. If only we had that level of participation for mask things, we might be like in New Zealand or somewhere by now. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know about New Zealand. New Zealand is lucky because they're on that island and they can just close down their borders. Well, they were they were able to, you know, go back to normal more or less. We did close our borders, Kristen. Everybody had a fit <laughs> in February. No, we didn't really close them. Not like New Zealand did. Oh, we closed them to China, and that was like. And it's you know. but it was only flights from China, and not like someone who stopped in London and then came. We from closed. China. We closed everything for that new strain in the UK, and it, it's, it's already it's already here. Yeah, yeah that's... well, it's uh, we'll we'll wrap it up on that. Like a nice, positive, <laughs> uplifting. Welcome <laughs> to twenty twenty one. If I was playing Plague Inc. right now, I'd be thrilled. <laughs> All right. Well, tomorrow we're gonna have business, and I believe robot will go along with business this week. That's a good category. I like robot. Good midweek, get over the hump. Not a lot of robot stuff going on right now. I feel like the robot companies are hit pretty hard right now. Yeah. Which you'd think that they'd be working diligently to try and get robots to replace human contact. But. No, it's a uh, it's all the manufacturing sectors and like there's a uh, I know I know some people that work at a company that does like the robotic, like the fully automated stuff. And it's still been a rough year for them. And they're, they've been like, we have contacts from customers that like want to automate their stuff, but they don't want to until everybody's vaccinated. So it's kind of like, eh. We'll see. Uh, what we got tomorrow? We just covered that. <laughs> we're all a little tired this week. We're all a little distracted. It's fine. We're fine. Krista... We'll Krista, give me. Hey, this is going to be a complicated goodbye week, uh, goodbye message this week. It's going to be a. I am filled with existential dread, but my eyes look amazing. Goodbye. Hi, I guess. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs>